Hey everybody, Andy Hamilton of Track Wrestling here, joined by two of the All-Americans on the 2010 NCAA Championship team for the Iowa Hawkeyes, now members of the coaching staff in Iowa City. We have Daniel Dennis and Ryan Morningstar. Welcome in, fellas. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot, Hamilton. Well, we're going to reflect on uh, the 2010 season a little bit, also talk uh, 2020 and uh, look ahead to 2021 a little bit. Uh, but first, I want to start it off with 2010 and that team that uh, put together a three-year title run. Uh, interesting circumstances, the way that team came together. You had uh, you two were part of a uh, recruiting class that came together uh, under former coach Jim Zaleski and his staff. And then you had a bunch of guys that went to Virginia Tech that followed Tom Brands there and – and came back when he became the head coach. Let's start with you, with you, Ryan. I mean, your, your recollection of that situation, you knew a bunch of those guys. You knew the uh, Iowa guys that had gone off to uh, Virginia Tech, Dan LeClaire, Joey Slayton, and uh, Jay Borschel, of course, uh, grew up with them. What do you remember about that situation coming together and, and uh, the period of uh, uh, influx there when those guys were coming into the program? Um, you know, I mean, I grew up with, with all those guys, like the Iowa guys, LeClaire, Borshall, and Slayton, and, and I was very good friends with, with those guys and, and uh, you know, took my recruiting trip with those guys out to Virginia Tech. And then, um, you know, I knew Metcalf because we were roommates on, uh, on that Virginia Tech visit, you know, and we had some really good conversations. And, and I think I even warmed up with him at Senior Nationals and, you know, and, uh, you know, so – and I, I grew up wrestling him, you know, we started first time I wrestled him was at Tulsa nationals in eighth grade. So um, there was a lot of overlap with those guys coming in. So the transition for me was, was very easy. You know, those guys coming in because I was familiar with those guys and uh, it was exciting too. You know, I mean, we were, we were eager to, to put Iowa back on the map or at least, you know, the, the guys that have been following the program. I mean, the Iowa guys, they wanted to see Iowa win. Um, you know, when we were growing up, you know, and so we didn't really see that, um, you know, when we were in high school and stuff, you know, we want to put Iowa back on the map. So I think there's a lot of pride in that. And then I think one of my first memories of them coming back and, and Dennis, you can kind of confirm this. I think we, uh, it was the world trials in, um, in Sioux city. And I think we jumped in my mom's minivan and, and Slayton got his, mom's SUV or something and we all jumped in cars and we all went out and we camped at like a Jolly Rogers outside of town and so that was like the first the first um meeting between all of us and getting all of us together and you know it clicked I mean for me it clicked right away and Slayton and and Dennis you know there was those guys were at the same weight class so it might have been a little different for them but I mean they're all after the same thing but I'll let Dennis talk about that that was a, a really good trip for for us and just just coming together and getting to know one another and you know we've got some great stories from that trip but uh oh, yeah that was an awesome trip and Slayton it's funny going back and thinking like the first time I met Metcalf I remember I mean I think we had been out maybe maybe partying or hanging out and trying to try and just meet each other running into running into people and like we didn't have the the best first interaction and then it was like the next day it was like wait who's that and it was like okay, we got it all mixed up in the confusion, like getting to know them immediately when they got there. I know Morningstar knew more of them and trained with the LeClairs and Borschel and Slayton in high school. I had no idea who any of them were, but immediately it, it was a good click and it was after the same goal. Even even people who, I mean, I, wa I wasn't from Iowa, being from Illinois, it's like I didn't have the aspirations of, I didn't follow college wrestling as closely as these guys lived it, but immediately it was like, I got included in it. Joey Slayton, we were at the same weights, but, and we competed against each other, but there was never any bad blood. There was always like healthy competition. I mean, we wanted to, we wanted to beat each other up, but it wasn't, it wasn't like in a bad malicious way or anything. It was just, these guys are after a high level goal and they bring you on into it. Um, and I felt like, bringing those guys in I, I remember initially when we got the word on it I was I was like kind of upset and threatened and a little scared I'm like who's coming in these guys are bringing it and uh 
you know, it was immediately when they got there, it was a, it was a, it was a family a little bit, you know, That's what it felt like. Yeah. I was going to ask before you sort of answered my next question, but I was going to ask you, Dan, like uh, your, your reaction when you, when you find out that Tom Brands is going to be the head coach, you I'm obviously don't have as much uh, maybe uh, knowledge of him or, you, you know, the relationship isn't there the way that uh, maybe it is for Morningstar growing up in Iowa and knowing all those guys. But uh, uh, you hear that Tom's coming, you start to hear word that uh, he's bringing five guys with him and, and one's going to be at 133 pounds, a highly credentialed guy. And then you got LeClaire at 141 too. What's running through your mind right away? Um, new coach. <laughs> How's this going to go? Um, are you, are you going to be treated fairly? Yeah, I mean, a lot of things come up in your mind and then it's like, Wow this coach is going to do everything for you to get you better. No matter if you, he recruited you or not. Um, you were his kid and it was that it was, it was a great feeling, you know, as soon as you met him and actually learn what he's about, it's all right. He, he's going to push me and but he's going to, he's committed to me too. You know? So that was, that was a big thing. I'll let either one of you guys take it. Or both of you take it. Just your thoughts on, uh, you know, that first year, how much did uh, you feel like an energy change, a culture change within the room when, uh, you know, that new group comes in? Um, I think that, you know, I mean, there was an energy change um, right away out of the gate. Um, you know, you got um, you got guys coming in. There's excitement around the program. There's hype. Um, and I think that was kind of something that was missing was that energy. And I think right away when the hire was made, I mean, the fans were ignited again. Um, the, uh, it was just an exciting time and it was great momentum coming in. And then, you know, after the Virginia tech guys kind of, they, you know, got the, the door slammed on them when they went to transfer and they got denied their year. Um, there was still that fire, that energy and, and through that year. And you can, you can kind of feel it coming, you know, you can, you can feel the improvements coming and, and then uh, Mark Perry won a national title that year. And so there was great momentum for the program and it just, it just snowballed. And then, you know, when we started that um, 20, uh, 07, 08 season, you know, when we, uh, you know, started knocking off the, the, the heavy favorites, you know, they, I think pretty quick people realized that we were for real at the time. And that, that's one thing I remember. Um, it, it wasn't that long of a gap in between uh, Zaleski leaving and, and Tom getting hired. And I do remember it was like when that news came out, the energy and support around the program, I remember that coming alive and being like the, the support was huge. And the energy and the expectation was like, all right, guys, the expectation is not to settle. I mean, we took fourth um, our freshman year. And it was it, like – it was move, we were trying to be champs and everything, but it was it was like the expectation when Tom came in and then when Terry came in and with Schwab and Zadik and all those guys, it was like it, the expectation was raised for sure, um, and that that was something that I remember the excitement and the I mean hey we're we're coming to to rebuild this dynasty and we're coming to dominate like we did in the nineties. Um, I remember. I remember that was the immediate like expectation and what we were working towards. And that's what we talked about too. It was, it was talking about setting records and getting national champs at every weight and working to do that. And that was, that was something that I, I think it was probably there by default before, but it wasn't as highlighted as it was when Tom and Terry came in and, and when the other staff did. Dan, for you at, at one thirty three. Uh, in and around there, you have Charlie Falk at 25. You have uh, Slayton. You have LeClaire, Montel Marion. During your time there, and then even later in your career, Tony Ramos, Nate Moore, Matt McDonough. Uh, Alex Curtis was a monster. We had, we had hammers at – I mean, we were three deep, um, and it was a hard room. I mean, there was – I, there was months where, I mean, people talk when you get into college, I didn't get a takedown for months. It was like, I, I wouldn't say that that was true, but there was months where it was leaving. It was like, shit, I got my ass kicked. And 
it's not looking like it's going to change anytime soon. Cause every, everywhere you would go, it was like, there wasn't an easy, I'm going to beat up on this guy. It was like, even kids that you were better than, it was like, this kid's fighting me tooth and nail. JJ Krutzinger had a motor on me and he was just, he would push you to the limit where he's like, gosh, stop, like calm down. You're not supposed to be this tough. And it was everywhere you, you looked It was, you didn't get a, a break much. Um, and I think it was the same for Morningstar. I, I, was, I saw him go with Metcalf and then Borschel and, like, just nonstop. It was like, where, where's a day off, you know? Um, but I don't know where if you're – that's where you're going with it. Alex Sertes, I, I lived with him for three years. He was a year older than me. I, I can count on one hand how many takedowns I got in four years. And it, it, he used to beat the brakes off, man. We would go together weekly. Um, and it, it's – it was hard living in that room, but you got better. Brian, for you, like uh, with, with, you know, I've heard people talk about Metcalf and how he kind of set the tone for, you know, the team. Having a guy that uh, is on the roster that's, a, you know, one of your best guys in the room, if not the best guy, and he's uh, one of those guys that's it's wrestling the way that uh, Iowa style was molded. What did he do to, to uh, kind of lead the way for – you know, that, that change in, in expectation change. And this is how we're going to wrestle, not just having the examples on the coaching staff, but also having a guy out front in your class that's doing it the way that uh, you guys set out to do. Oh yeah. I mean, he was a great leader. I mean, he was, he was a, a, a great partner for me. And, and um, you know, I mean, he was a, he was a guy that was my age that, you know, went out and he won right away you know he was a guy that showed that you didn't have to wait to to be a junior or senior to win you know so as far as mentality and, and a guy that wrestled hard I mean he was he was a great partner for me you know and and you know like Dennis said anywhere you looked you had good partners you know with with Borsal and you know I'd go up to Keddy and wrestle with Keddy and and, um, you know, it, it, you had Schwab in the room and Zadok in the room. And for a year, we had Freyer in the room um, as, a, as a club guy. So, um, you know, it was, it, was a, uh, it, was a, it, was, it was awesome. It was a great experience and having, having that leadership, you know. And it wasn't, just, it wasn't just Metcalf leading the charge. I mean, everybody, I mean, everybody held the line. Um, and if, if, if Metcalf wasn't, wasn't, uh, holding the standard one day, there was somebody that was going to make sure that he held the standard too. I mean, it wasn't like, um, there was no free passes, you know, I mean, people held each other accountable. And, um, the thing that I loved about that team was everything was in the open. Um, you know, when, when, uh, someone was, um, wasn't doing their job, uh, people called them out on it and, and it was not fun to be called out on, you know, and when you weren't, when you weren't up, upholding your end of the bargain. So I, I think that's one of the things that, that really, um, really helped us as a team and, and really uh, made us great was, you know, that, that leadership that, you know, let, let's get the chips on the table. There's, there's, there's no dust under the rug here. You know, we're, we're going to get everything out in the open. And that was one of the biggest things I think in the transition was, you know, there was, <clears throat> When, when Tom came to town, I think that was one of the biggest things that uh, was the biggest change, I guess, was, you know, let's, let's get everything out in the open. There's no monkey business. You know, you, there's no cutting corners. Um, you know, let's get everything out on the table and, and be honest with ourselves and let's, let's move forward, you know. And, and one of the other things I was going to add um, when we were talking about the transition is, you know, we were fourth the year before that uh, um, Zaleski was fourth the year before and our team was fourth and, and, you know, he was, he was let go after getting fourth in the country. And so to me, that was like, fourth isn't good enough, you know, around here that, I mean, from our administration side of it is, you know, we gotta, we gotta be better than that. You know, there's, there's an expectation here and, you know, people, there was people around the program that were like, Hey, we got fourth. That's pretty good. We're, we're up and coming. We're on the rise. We're, you know, we, we're going to, you know, be in the contention for the national title next year. And, and fourth isn't good enough. And, you know, we, we want to win. And so that was like eye opening for me, you know, because I mean, it, it, it just showed, I mean, and, you know, I, I signed up for that, you know, when I, when I signed up to go to Iowa, but the expectation of winning is, is um, paramount. 
for you, you were in the mix from the get-go. Like, you knock off Trent Paulson, number one in the country, in one of your first dual meets in Carver-Hawkeye Arena. Dan, on the other hand, like, it was a little bit rough sledding there that, that first year, throwing lateral drops at everybody. Uh, record, record right about 500, but uh, fun to watch. What do you remember about him in his first year with the Hawkeyes? That's the morning star, right? Yeah, I didn't think yeah. I was that reckless either, yeah. by the way. I don't remember being that bad in most of my matches, but I've heard that by a couple of people, though. So I guess he's not bad, but you were pretty – he was w totally wide open, you know, and, and Dennis became a fan. So I redshirted my freshman year, and Dennis uh, wrestled as a true freshman. So, um, you know, he uh, – <clears throat> He was right out of the gate. I mean, he was a fan favorite. Even, you know, he was he was a little bit above 500, I think. And But you could see the potential there, and you could see the – what are you shaking your head at? Are you, are you not below 500? Below 500. I, think I, was, I think I was a little below 500. <laughs> I think I was like 16 or 18 or 17. I don't know what it was. Hamilton, you probably have – I think it was right around there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it wasn't good. So anyway, but I mean, he was a fan favorite though, because I mean, you never knew what to expect and he was going to give you everything he had. And, and, you know, I mean, coming from, I mean, I remember watching Dennis, I think at senior nationals, did you get fifth? Yep. Mm -hmm. I remember watching your fifth place match and uh, I was watching it with Rick Loera and George Loera. <laughs> and uh, we were watching the match and, and I don't know if you'd committed yet, but you were thinking about I. Yeah. Steiner was watching you too and um but anyway <clears throat> I'm like this kid's gonna be good and then and then anyway so to wrestle as a true freshman you know kind of raw and uh and uh was second in the state in Illinois the year before um I mean he came a long ways in a short amount of time you know as, as a true freshman to step out there and and I just remember I mean you never knew what to expect I mean it was it was literally that that uh, documentary, The Wild Man, I mean, that was that was full effect. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember it being that bad. And I'll tell you what, that I trusted my coaches, and it was the, the like, the harder you're wrestling, you should come off that mat feeling dead. If you have any energy, you didn't do enough. My high school coach, like, I would run through walls for multiple of them, um, but my it was like, that converted, and it was always the same message from high school into college and throughout the coaches that I had, but it was always the, you can do it. It's just wrestle harder. It was only wrestle harder. If you just wrestle harder and figure it out. And that was, that's like the only thing that I think of with Terry, his, his like Terry should come with a sign on above his head that just says, figure it out, <laughs> figure it out. Like, and if you're not getting it done, then try it a different way and get better. And that was, that was a reoccurring, like echo all the way through through high school into college and brands they would put you under the gun so bad and they were never satisfied man I don't remember being that reckless but I guess I was um but at least I fans didn't think I was boring that was one thing is like if you're gonna lose at least like make the kid not want to wrestle you again and how do you want to look when you're losing so it's like all right just <laughs> try <laughs> get, throw something out there <laughs> When you talk about figuring out, I think that that, like, I look back at that 2010 season, and that was kind of a theme of that season. I mean, you guys have this high-powered team, and you never were able to put it together completely because of injuries. I mean, I think, Dan, I think you missed a month with an ankle injury. I was out for two months. Okay. Beatty was out for the entire Big Ten season. Erickson missed, like, the first half of the season. You guys go to national duels, and you're missing four starters you still find a way to win the tournament. How do, were you able to keep guys that, that weren't in a starting role engaged that, hey, your number might be called and you're going to be ready when it's time? I know that uh, those are the, the walking orders, but it's easier said than done. You know, from your vantage point, Ryan, how was that, that able to happen? Um, I think we just had, we had a lot of uh, good, talented young guys that were hungry to compete and, um, I think a lot of them grew up wanting to wear that, that black and gold. Um, you know, a couple of examples that come to mind are, are uh, uh, Nate Moore and, and uh, Grant Gambrell, who, um, you know, who are actually, I lived with my senior year, Tom, you know, they were young guys. They didn't want to live on campus. And, 
And so Tom was like, hey, why don't you think about live, move, moving in with these guys and, and uh, just kind of bringing them along a little bit, you know, and take them under your wing. And, and so that's what I did. And so I think a lot of those young guys that, that uh, they just grew up Hawkeye fans and they wanted, to, they wanted to get in that limelight. They wanted to get out on that mat. So they had those opportunities that year and they, they did a good job of, of making the most of them, you know. Um, so like when we had when we had duels that year, I think we had like three or four guys out maybe, and um, you know those young guys stepped up and, and won some big matches for us, and and you know they stayed hungry, and and I think it's a tribute to um, the coaching staff and and uh, that we had at that time that did a really good job with um, bringing the culture along and and keeping these guys hungry and motivated and and the training situations and um, you know they had. I, I, I could I don't want to speak for them, but I think they those young guys they looked up to our senior class. Um, when you have leaders like Dennis, you know, and and uh, they're they're easy to follow, and 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 uh, they're they they want to be pleased. They want to please those older guys, and I think that was part of it. You know, where we had a lot of firepower in that senior class, and we had young guys that that kind of wanted to take that torch to the next step for the next generation. Just going on that, I'm not positive in Hamilton. You need to do some fact checks for me. Uh, we had some hammers. I was out, and Nate Moore stepped in, and I, in a couple of matches, I, I think, and I'm not positive on this, I think we shut out the state of Michigan that year. And, and I mean, Michigan, this is a jerk thing for me to say, and I might get some flack for it, and uh, that's fine, but I'm pretty sure – that we shut out that entire state, the University of Michigan, Central Michigan, and Michigan State, whenever we saw them in any matchup, including Midlands, we had some hammers that just, they filled in and just, they stepped up when, when the team needed it. And like to do that, that, that's kind of a jerk thing to say, but that, that's a testament to how tough our team was. I mean, it didn't matter that we were deep. We were deep. I mean, we were three deep at weights where you'd be an All-American if the first two guys that your weight went down, you would have guys that would step in and our team would be taken care of. And that's an impressive thing. And that's not trying to be a jerk, but that we, we had a ton of firepower that year. And it was, it was pretty cool to see that. Dan, Dan for you, uh, with Matt McDonough, um, in one of the big stories of that year, you know, dropping down from 33 during his redshirt season to 25, wins a national title. When did you know he was going to be a national title contender that season? Uh, immediately. The, you knew that the way he trained in the summer. Um, he would give – he would give, I mean, everyone battles around him that were having success and just knowing that kid, he wasn't going to have any competition nerves. He, he, he scrapped hard, man. He was, he was somebody that I did not like going with very often. Um, but he, he would push you and – I mean, him making that move, he was a, he was a tweener at 33, 41 at one point and him committing to going 25 and shrinking his body down. It was, you knew as long as he did it right and you knew the type of kid he was and that he did everything right. He would, uh, he would immediately be a threat. And he was, I mean, he started th knocking off the top ranked guys in the beginning of the year. I'm pretty sure. Um, who, who do you have? He had a good match with long. Was it? Yeah. Three of them, four of them, I think. Yeah. But I think one early in the season that, like really gave him some credit and put him high on the, on the national rankings. You know, from your vantage point, Dan, watching from the outside and, and seeing this 2020 team, what kind of uh, similarities did you see between that team, this bunch of Hawkeyes this past season and, and the team that you wrestled on as a senior? They were, they're dominant. They, they're so dominant. Leaving the match and not, and not getting bonus points or burying a guy or making a statement on – like just making a statement where we're at that's and having fun with it too. I mean, it, it's not like you hear the bad boy. I was back in the beating everyone up or being a robot. Like that's not what it was. Everyone had their own style and everyone does now. Um, that's evident. You have some kids that are Iowa style grind you to pieces. And then you have kids that are going to pick you apart and out finesse you or just out wrestle you in every position. Um, I think the the mentality of if you get bon if you can get bonus points and you're not pushing it to get it, then that expectation it, it was an expectation. I, I think there's a lot of similarities and and it was fun doing it, man. We had a lot of fun. Um, we had a lot of fun at, at tournaments and 
it was it was fun wrestling and competing and I, I see the same thing in the team especially with you know Lee and Kemmer and Marinelli and all those guys Lugo I mean it, it's the same thing there's not an easy weight there's not a there's not an area where there's not a tough kid trying to get high on I mean to win to win nationals there's not a kid in there um and that's that, that's the big similarities you know, looking at this team, Ryan, 2020 team, you were instrumental in recruiting a bunch of these guys, and you got stories about alligators and yard sales and uh, wrestling eighth graders, you know, at camps and things like that. Why don't you take, a, you know, a couple minutes here, three minutes, four minutes, whatever it takes to uh, share some of your stories about uh, your favorite recruiting stories about this team and, and how this team came together? Um... All right. Well, uh, you know, one of the most fun trips I've ever been on was when I went down to recruit Lugo. Tom and I went down there and, and uh, I mean, just talk about tight knit family community. Um, there's uh, <clears throat> his wrestling club that he grew up in. They're, they're very tight. They're hardworking. I mean, it's, it's blue collar, you know, in a, in a hot, 100 degree wrestling room scrapping it out you know I mean awesome stuff down there and and uh you know we so we went and saw all that all that stuff and then we went out to uh the Everglades one of um one of the club dads has a like an airboat um tour service and so we were like we we went out on this airboat and Tom's driving the airboat and and we're flying through all these passages in the Everglades we're out in the middle of nowhere and then we uh, we came up on this little island deal and had like you know some park benches and stuff up there and it's I mean this guy's this guy uh, that that runs this tour service he had this little island set up and so we get on this dock and I got pictures of it and I, I think I even have a video of it um, so he like starts doing this alligator call where he's like just going oh, oh, oh. then all of a sudden this ten foot twelve foot alligator comes like submerges from the water and swims right towards the dock and I'm like oh that's kind of neat and all of a sudden this thing throws his claw up on that dock and just pulls himself out of the water and he's walking right towards us and I'm like what is going on this is a wild alligator and so this guy it's kind of part of this tour and where he pulled where you know this wild alligator feeds him and he comes around and, and so he like he gets up on the bank and he jumps on his back and and then like, he's like, come over here and just touch it, you know? And so I went over around and I, I just, you know, smacked it on the tail and it like spins around. And I'm like, I mean, being from, you know, a pig farm in the middle of Iowa, you know, that was, that was pretty cool to, to see that kind of stuff that you only see on that geo, you know? So it was pretty neat to, to see that, you know, and then you got stories of, you know, when I was, when I was an assistant at Wisconsin, um, going and working Jeff Jordan camps and, uh, you know, I don't know if you've ever been around those camps, and uh, Dennis, you have, I know. Um, but, uh, you know, you work camp all day, and then at the end of the day, you know, you you wrestle hard. You know, you, you do like three or four sessions, and then you do hard wrestling for an hour, and then you're done. And so they rotate, a lot of rotation. So you go from one guy to the next to the next, you know. And at the time, you know, I, I was there. I wrestled with Zeke Jordan and Bo Jordan and, up and down the lineup and then um Eli Stickley you know I'll never forget he came out and grabbed me by the head head butted me and I'm like this I mean he's 95 pounds you know and then then I he kind of laughed about it you know and then he grabbed my head did it again I'm like starting to get a little pissed off at a 95 pounder you know I'm like you, you turkey get over you know it's kind of funny but uh you know I'll never forget the first time I I wrestled with Marinelli who's in eighth grade and, you know, we work this camp all day, you know, you think, oh, I'm going to wrestle an eighth grader now. You go out there and, <clears throat> you know, you go from one guy to the next and, you know, you go from Bo Jordan to, to uh, Marinelli. I'm like, all right, this kid's in, this kid's in eighth grade. He's, you know, he's, he's not going to be, you know, he can't be that good. All of a sudden he just clubs me hard. I mean, like one that you feel all the way down your spine. I'm like, this kid is in eighth grade. And at the, you know, as Marinelli is in eighth grade, he's the same size he is now, but I mean, he was a boy and just 
club me and then pop my elbow and hit a hit a pop high crotch you know and I'm like right off the bat I'm like holy smokes you know and so I remember going back to Wisconsin and Barry was like hey how'd your camp go blah 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 you know I'm like I don't know there's a kid out I know Bo and Zeke are tough but there's a kid out there that that's young that's gonna be really good and it was Marinelli you know and so I wrestled him when Oh, sorry. I wrestled him when he was a senior in high school. I was living in California and I brought two kids out uh, to the Jeff Jordan camp. And I, I think he had committed, but yeah, he was a senior. He had committed. I remember you saying like, go, go, if you can get your hands on this Marinelli kid, wrestle him. And I, I used to be able to scrap with bigger guys and like hold my own. Like I could, I could wrestle with uh, Nick, Nick Moore and uh, I could wrestle with St. Joe. Like I could hang in there, you know, I wrestled with, a, it was the same thing. It's like, oh, he's a high school kid. I'll be all right. And second one, when it was like, go, the first thing he did was exactly that Club Morningstar is talking about. And it shocks you. It rattles your bones. And I want to say it was like, and I got too much pride when I'm like, when we're going live. So I was it's like, you little high school kid still? Like, it started getting physical. And I think it went, I, I think I got a couple of takedowns, but it was he, he beat the crap out of me when he was in high school, and it was one of those extremely impressive, like, this kid is going to be crazy good in high school or in college, in college. Like, it, it's impressive. I know exactly what you're talking about. Sorry, keep going. <laughs> no, that, that, that's about all I had to say about it. So good. <laughs> well, Dan, for you, uh, you know, you took Spencer Lee to Rio with you as your training partner for the Olympics. Uh, what do you remember about the first time you got your hands on him and wrestled him? So the first time I met Spencer Lee, we were at the OTC. I was up at 61 kilos. It was my first year coming back from California. And we were at a, at a national team camp at the OTC. And it was Lee was looking at Iowa. He, hadn't, he was still young. I think he was a sophomore going into his junior year. and uh, Or maybe a junior going into his senior year. I'm not sure. And uh, he got on top of me and we were doing parterre and he legit gutted me and I was going hard. He just caught me off guard and he was weighing 115 pounds. And it was like, that feel is crazy. And then we wrestled a couple more times at camp. It was like, this kid can wrestle in positions and at a pace that I have never felt before. This kid is freaky special. And then uh, a year later, making the, the Olympic team, it was we had, we our re relationship had developed and you know really liked that he's an amazing kid and just got to wrestle more with him and it was like for who I'm gonna be feeling internationally I really don't think that there's a better kid to bring the positions he can wrestle in and the feet the looseness he gives you and he's hard to get a hold of I mean he was when he was a sophomore junior in high school he's a, he's a freak man and not not in the hammer way of Marinelli and the physicalness but just in the things that he does and you feel like you're safe or feel like you have something and then you're upside down on your head before you know it. it it's, it's really impressive. Um, but I mean, I brought Lee with me to, to Rio and we did match simulation probably a week or two before competition. And he legit beat me in a match. I, he put me on my head early on and then I was working my way back at it. That it was like, it might've been even or something and then he got four again. And it was like, freaking lost to a kid in high school eight or I don't even know what the score was but it's like he can he can he can score on you at a high level no matter who you are and no matter when he was in high school like the future with him at the senior level I can't I, I I'm ecstatic for um but we wrestled the next day and I beat him but it took a lot for me to get ready <laughs> and I should have I think the coaches told him to lighten up on me he's a freak man um but yeah that's he's a stud Ryan, you guys, uh, Iowa finishes in the top five every year from the first year you're in the lineup, you know, all the way to now. I mean, that streak's still intact. Uh, but, but taking the step this year to go from that two, three, four, five range to be in the consensus number one at the end of the season, dominant regular season, win the Big Ten championships, what were difference makers for the program that took you from the level you guys have been at to the top spot here this this past season um you know i you know dennis you know kind of mentioned it earlier is the the guys that we've got in there you know i mean we've got we we put together some some good recruiting classes and and you know started you know building that momentum with 
with Young and Kemmer and then Lee. I mean, you get guys like that, and, and then you add to it. Uh, Marinelli was was part of that also, and you add to those guys, and and you build that momentum, and you get people excited, and and you get people thinking that they can win, and and not waiting to win, and and uh, you know, and then you get guys that are you know you start getting that depth in your room where you get guys competing and, and um, competing for spots, not only spots, but they competing for bonus points, competing for, for uh, um, uh, end of the year accolades, as far as Hodge trophy, um, outstanding wrestler awards, you know, you get guys doing that and focused on the right things, good things can happen. And um, I think that's kind of what you saw. And that's, that's a similarity to, to our team our senior year you know we had guys competing for bonus points we had guys competing for most pins um you know and and it was exciting and and it pushed each other and and uh good things happen when when you have like-minded individuals that that want to be the very best you know and and uh, when you start competing that having that competition um for for uh starting spots when you have that competition for uh end of the year accolades hodge trophies um you know, outstanding wrestler awards. I mean, it's, it's fun and it's, it's exciting. And I think that's, you know, something that is, you know, unique and something that was kind of, that kind of happened this year, you know, and, and uh, yeah. Ron, what was uh, your reaction when you find out the news that uh, Dennis is coming back to Iowa city to be a club coach? Oh, I mean, it was, it was when Tom mentioned it, you know, Hey, what do you think of this? I mean, I was all on board, you know, I know Dennis, I've known Dennis a long time. Uh, we live, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a natural fit. You know, he brings so much energy to our room. He brings a lot to the table as far as technically. And, and he's a guy that works and he works hard and um, everybody loves Dennis. If you've met Dennis, you love him. So, um, you know, it's He's only saying that because I'm on right now. <laughs> like, Screw this guy. <laughs> and I don't want a dead leg when I get back to Iowa City. When you get back to Iowa City. You're getting it. We're yeah. getting it. I can't wait. Well, Dan, for you, I mean, it's interesting. You go from Spencer helping you make uh, get ready for the Olympics in 2016. Now your job is in, in 2021 to help him try to make the Olympic team and then go to Tokyo and, and bring home a gold. What are you most looking forward to? about working with him again and, and helping him achieve his goals now? Being around that kid, man, he, he's one of the most self-motivated kids all way, like at all times. He's a great kid. In Rio, he was reading Harry Potter books or wanting to work out with me. And that's just being around that type of kid and, and the family. Um, the family, his dad is a rock star. His mom, is, they're awesome people. Um, just, just being back and helping him out. He gets, he, he's, it's, uh, it's not easy coaching, right? Coaching is hard. He is the ideal kid that you want to coach. He does everything right. He makes, he doesn't make it easy. There's stresses with it and it's going to be hard trying to keep up with them. Um, but it's, he's, he's a, he, he's a nat, not natural. No one is right. It's, he puts in the work. He does things right. He lives the right lifestyle. I'm just excited to be back around him. Um, his goals and aspirations are, or any way that I can help him and provide opportunities and just provide different field to help him get that. That's, that's what I'm ecstatic for. I don't, I don't have any, any other purpose other than trying to do that with him and that family and the, and the whole rest of the family up there. I mean, that's what, that's, what's great about the HWC is that it, it's not, it's not a, what's the word I'm looking for. It's not like a impersonal bold program. It's a very tight knit, like, got each other's back when you're not doing it right we're working together to address the issues to work through it and that's that's what I'm pumped up for yeah what make that job most appealing to you uh well right now I mean being back around those guys and being back around that culture and it's hard leaving this area and I love it here and it really is hard leaving but it's it I'm most excited to be back up to to that program they're 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 doing it right they're training right the everyone's on the same page. Everyone is on the exact same page working for the same goal. And that's something that, that I'm ecstatic for, but it, it's just good timing. My wife's doing five weeks. It's having a kid up there and the support and three hours away from my family is just a lot better, it's a lot better situation right now. So 
looking forward to getting back up there and being close to family and being a part back in that family. Well, we'll wrap it up with this. I'll let you guys uh, take turns. You can go first, Ryan. Just uh, your most prominent thoughts about that uh, 2010 team. Heck, you can group them all together, 2008, 2009, 2010. But uh, your most prominent thoughts that uh, maybe we haven't touched on yet uh, that you think, you know, are relevant and, and interesting about that bunch. Um, I think the, the thing that I'm probably most proud of is, is, uh, being a part of, a uh, a championship team that kind of brought Iowa wrestling back. Um, you know, it had been a drought, um, from when we won a title. Um, and so being a part of that, Tom coming back, you know, the history that, that, that goes along with it and, uh, you know, being a part of, Tom's first national championship team and, you know, bringing that Iowa program back was, is probably the most, um, most gratifying thing to me and really in my whole career. So I would say probably that is, I mean, it's, it was, it was a lot of fun to be a part of and, and um, you know, those are, those are great days and great memories that I have. So absolutely. And for you, Dan, just uh, echo what Morningstar just said, because that's, that was when I was growing up, it was, you know, the dynasty of college wrestling. And it was, I mean, say by the bell had a, <laughs> a character that wrestled for Iowa. Like it, it, back in the nineties, it was like, it was the dynasty program. So to be a part of getting it back on the map, it, that's a really cool feeling. Um, that the things that stand out to me are, I mean, I, I had, uh, and we all, we all did. I, I mean, the heartbreak that, you know, we all, a, a lot of us faced our senior year leaving, like not getting what we wanted and falling short. And knowing that, I, I mean, I remember Borschel and Morningstar and Metcalf, like really coming by and like, hey man, how you doing? How you holding up in that community and that family? And, and like, it wasn't only those guys. It was a lot more than that. It was, it was, it was a family being a part of that, getting that program back on a dominating platform and keeping it there for, for, I mean, we were on three of those teams, um, was, was really cool and really special. And just the, the family that it was, um, there was a lot of support from our teammates and, and our coaches, man, our coaches are, are, they're parent figures. They really are. Um, and that's something that you can't ever talk enough about or be grateful for enough, but that's all I think about looking back. Well, guys, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you for your time and, been uh, enjoyable looking back on that run for Iowa wrestling fun team to cover for that period of time and certainly uh, really enjoyed the conversation here so thanks much